Hello, welcome to DT Ocean. My name is Matthew Topper and I'm a researcher from Technalia Research and Innovation in the Basque Country in Spain. And this tutorial is to give you an introduction to the DT Ocean software. Um, its main purpose is to showcase the main functionalities of the software, covering the whole design process from the project start to the interpretation of the results. And we're going to take you step by step um, through a, a basic example. So when you open DT Ocean, you are greeted by this screen in front of you and it's split into three main areas. On the left, we have two docs called Pipeline and Simulations. And I'll explain this in more detail as we go through the tutorial. But in general, Pipeline is going to guide you through the design process from top to bottom. So you'll have inputs at the top and results at the bottom. Simulations is where you see each of the simulations that you've performed and that you can compare results between simulations by switching between them. At the bottom here, we have the system window, which is showing you the um, outputs from the underlying modules that you're running and any errors that have occurred in, in more detail. And this area here, we call the context area, uh, has three functions. Firstly, it's for inputting data, and we call that the data context. Secondly, it's for looking at charts and plots, and we call that the plot context. And then thirdly, it's for doing comparisons between simulations. Uh, surprisingly, we call that the comparison context. And you can switch between these uh, contexts using these three icons here. Uh, the icons on the far left are obvious. Open a new project, start a new project, open uh, an existing project, save a project, close a project. And then these other icons, again, are part of the design process. So we'll go through those in more detail later. Assuming you need help uh, through any part of the design process, you can access the DT Ocean manuals either through the help menu or by clicking the help button here. And this will bring up an HTML view of the user manual uh, that you can search or you can click through. Uh, note that the manuals are installed separately to the overall tool to allow us to update them um, without having to update the, the main software. So, how do we start? Well, the beginning of the process, if you've not done a project before, is to simply click New Project. And then that starts the system up. So as we can see, something appears in the pipeline and we have the data context appearing as well. Nothing selected at the minute, so everything is blank. Um, but if we select device technology type, we get a widget to enter a value. And as you can see, I can choose between these four technology types. So tidal floating, tidal fixed, wave floating, and wave fixed. In every project, you must start with this point. The beginning is to select a technology type. Um, once I've selected a technology type, I click OK, and then that adds it to the system. If I click Cancel, it's removed from the system. So we also have these indicators in the pipeline here that tell you whether the data has been entered or not. Uh, the next stage in the process would be to click Initiate Pipeline here. And the system is smart enough to understand that you haven't provided all the data required for the next stage. And it will give you a list of variables that you need to set in order to be able to continue to the next stage. Now, there are several ways of entering inputs into DT Ocean, and I want to show to you now um, the method we use when we have uh, the specially prepared DT Ocean databases available to us. Now, there are example databases that come with the DT Ocean software, um, but for the project itself, we have uh, more uh, realistic data. So I want to show you how we might filter some of that out. Um, so again, we must start with a technology selection. In this case, I'm going to choose wave floating and click OK. 
and then we have to attach to a database. So here we have a few databases that we've been using. Uh, local is the database you need probably, and this is the one that's set up um, for your system. Uh, we click apply, and then as you can see, the database is selected as local. We close this. And then always in the next stage here, we click initiate pipeline. And then this will bring the filtering options from the database down into the tool. So the database is powerful because you can store many sites and many devices uh, in the single database. And what this allows you to do is to basically mix and, mix and match between your site and devices. And then this might not make sense before, between a, a wave lease area and a tidal device, but it could allow you, for instance, to have several different device types um, that you can test for a single lease area, for instance. DT Ocean doesn't allow you to mix those device types, but this does allow you to at least test the same situations fairly straightforwardly. So to select a site, uh, I would choose, again, this drop down menu. This gives me Shetland and I would click OK. And then we can see from the plot context that here we go. The Shetland site has been uh, selected and this gives you a, a rough overview of, of where that site is. Uh, there's something else here in the pipeline I should explain, which is these diamond indicators. We've seen a green circle, which means the data's in. We've seen a, a red circle, a red square, sorry, that means that it's required. Blue diamonds means it's optional. So you can either set this data or not, and different things will happen if you do or you don't. Now, because we've selected a site, it means that we can also select a bathymetry from that site. Uh, by clicking the uh, Initiate Bathymetry button here, we get more options that allow us to uh, visualize and change the lease boundary, which is the area where your devices will be placed, and the cable corridor, which is the area where the export cable is placed. And as you can see from clicking these uh, two variables here, um, visualizing them themselves isn't, isn't very informative, but we have another plot here, which is accessible through the plot manager called the all boundaries plot, which allows us to see all of the boundaries together. So uh, when we click OK here, we see the cable corridor and the lease area together, and that gives a much clearer picture of, of what we're trying to do. And the powerful aspect of this is it means we can filter the overall bathymetry in the um, in the database into a, a smaller section, which means that uh, you know um, if we didn't want to simulate such a large area or we were having um, some issues with computational time, we can reduce the bathymetry and reduce the load on on the system. Uh, so, how do we uh, reduce the lease area, for instance? Well, if I click back on the lease area and I go to the data context. Here we have a simple table editor. So I want to change the, the Y values of the lease area here. So I'm going to click edit and I'm going to double click the cell and I'm just going to reduce these to 5,000 like this. So I need to be careful to remember to click edit, uh, OK here so that information goes into the system. And then I click on the plot context and Again, I will look at the all boundaries plot and you'll see it's been reduced. And actually, I want to reduce this a little bit more. Click the edit button. Again, we'll put a zero in there. Zero, click OK. And there you go, it's been reduced significantly now. So again, if I look at the all boundaries plot, the lease area is much, much smaller than it was before. So what's this good for? Well, the hydrodynamics, for instance, needs the lease area, the, the electrical subsystems need the cable corridor. So I'm going to add these two modules. In general, how do we add modules to the system? Well, there is a, uh, a button here called Add Modules, which gives you a swap box and allows you to put in the modules you want. So in this case, I'm going to put in the hydrodynamics and electrical subsystems. Next to that are the uh, themes 
the assessments, which uh, again, add are added and removed in a similar way. I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, all I'm interested in is demonstrating, bringing some of the data from the database into the system. So to do that, I will click initiate data flow, which will populate the GUI with the data from the database. Once the database has finished filtering and it's loaded the variables into the modules, we can inspect what's happened. So if we click, for instance, the bathymetry in hydrodynamics, then we get a nice image of the bathymetry. The bathymetry is actually set up in a number of layers, uh, but this plot just shows us the, the top layer, which is effectively the bathymetric depths. Um, I've mentioned that the database contains information about devices and it contains information about uh, sites, but it also contains a number of reference data, which is the same across all of the modules. So for instance, if we look at the electrical subsystems and the static cable data, there's obviously no plot, switch to the data context. Uh, we can see all the information in the database that is available for um, uh, for those static cables. One thing to note here is that um, edits made for this project in the GUI are not uh, put back into the database. If you want to change this database data, then you use, need to use a, a different tool to modify that data. But um, if you want to make a quick tweak or something for your simulation, then, then this is an easy way to do it through, through the GUI.